Hello everybody and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a new video on Entity Framework Core. This time we'll talk about a very cool topic from my point of view and this is configurations in Entity Framework Core. And why are configurations that important? I guess we can already see this by looking at our monitor right now. What we see here is this own model creating method on our DB context class. And here of course this method is used and we use it of course to define exactly how we want uh, our database to look like. So how do we want to configure our entities that will be persisted in the database behind. And from this very, very brief look, we can already see that we have plenty of line of codes here, but unfortunately uh, we only configure two entities right now. So you can imagine in, in a real application where we would have to do a lot of such configurations, this method would become very, very, very long. And the biggest problem with this is, of course, that this method is then very, very uh, hard to read and probably also hard to understand and to find exactly, okay, what do we configure? Where do we configure? Because if you have to look through 100 or more lines of code, it's always a probability that you can simply miss the thing that you are looking for, especially if it's hidden on one certain line somewhere. So we have to bring a little bit more simplicity and a little bit more readability in our code base. And here is where configurations in EF Core come in. Because we can use own configuration classes for each of the entities that we actually want to configure. And this could prove to be very, very useful. So let's take a look on how this is done. But first we will create a new folder here. Um, that we will create, we will name configurations. Now I think we'll create it uh, in this dull folder that we already have. So let's add a new folder and let's call it configurations. Uh, of course, I missed an S at the end, but we'll just rename it and things should be right on track again. Good. Now, the next part of this entire uh, thing is that, uh, well, we can simply take actually the configurations for our our uh, entities here and move them into separate classes in this configurations folder. So I would say let's start one by one. So here first we configure or we create this many to many relationship uh, using this book author class that it's uh, actually meant to be a bridging table between books and authors. Because in our case, a book can be written by many authors and of course an author could write many books. So let's see how this is done. Our aim is to move this part here into a separate class and replace this, uh, all these line, lines of code with only one single line that actually will take our configuration from our new class. So let's create a new class here in this configurations folder. Uh, where is it class? And we'll name this book author configuration because book author is actually what we want to configure. Now, after we have done this, what we can do here, of course, to make this an entity framework core configuration, we have to inherit from I uh, entity entity type uh, configuration and this should be a generic one and we should specify which entity do we want to configure and we want to configure the book author. Now of course you would have to add some references here first uh, to this one and then we would have to add also a reference uh, to this one and using Microsoft Entity Framework Core. That, that should actually do it. And of course we have to implement this interface, but this is really, really easy. We just click here on this yellow light bulb and we click on implement interface and here we are. So this interface actually exposes this configure method where we have to define exactly what we want to configure. And the way we do this is exactly the same like we do it in our model builder method. So let's go back to our AppDB context and let's just simply remove this entire configuration for book author from here and uh, go back to the book author configuration and try to do the configuration here. Of course, we would have to do some tweaks here because we already specify here the entity on which we want uh, to do the configuration because we specify it here. So we can actually get rid of all about this uh, 
entity stuff because because we don't uh, really need it and then we can have here this builder has key uh, and then has one so we just have to get rid of this uh, entity method and then we should be fine so this is right now uh, configured of course no two dots so that's actually it this is how we have created this very uh, very simple configuration now the way uh, in which uh, we we can use this configuration then in uh, this on model creating well it's very very easy here instead of defining all these uh, type of, of of requirements for our entity we can just simply say here builder dot apply configuration and then here we can create a new instance of new book author configuration of course we would have to add uh, the namespace for this and that should do it afterwards and right now we have exactly the same behavior so we haven't changed anything but instead of having 10 lines of code here we have only one in this on model creating method and right now if we go through all this type of stuff or uh, all the configurations that we use here and if we know that we want to take a look at the book uh, uh, on onto how book authors are configured we simply go here on this class and we see exactly what the configuration for this book author entity is and i would say let's do exactly the same also for our book and let's clean up our own model creating method so we'll go back to these configurations and we'll add a new class here of course and we'll call it because we configure books uh, book configuration okay and as said we inherit from i entity type configuration and this is the generic one and we configure our book we add the necessary using namespaces and that should then do it using this one and implement the interface and here it is as we did as we've done previously we can just simply go back into our appdb context and we take everything that's related to book uh, we simply can cut it uh, sorry it's not the controller but the configuration that we need and we simply implement this here of course here once again since we already know which is the uh, entity that, that that we currently configure because we specify here uh, that it is of type book then we just have to remove this method here from our front api definitions and we should go be good to go we have still to remove this one and that should be it for the configuration at least so the last final thing that we can do here is go on builder apply configuration and here we can simply specify that we want to apply the book configuration this time <clears throat> and that should be it and in fact, you will see that if we generate a migration right now, it will be actually be an empty one because we haven't changed anything to our functionality. So our database will remain exactly like it is. So let's add the migration, add configurations. It should build our solution and it should create this migration. And theoretically, you see that it is an empty one. So we don't have anything here because once again what we did is actually just moving all the configurations into separate classes for each uh, entity so that our code actually becomes more readable and easier to find uh, actually the configurations that we are looking for because we had previously i guess around 30 lines of code uh, now we have only two and of course if you want to look into a certain configuration then you can just navigate to it and this is, in my point of view, a very, very powerful feature. And I really tend to use it in each project where I use Entity Framework Core, no matter how small, no matter how big, uh, how big configurations are really, really, really very important because it allows you to write a cleaner code from my uh, personal perspective, at least. Yeah. As you've seen, configurations in uh, EF Core are easy. It's really nothing more complicated than that. If you already have some Fluent API assertions in your own model creating method, 
then you can make your code look cleaner just by moving them into separate configuration files that you can just apply here in the on model creating method and that should be it. So this being said, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, then please feel free to like it, to, to thumbs up it. And if you know people that might be uh, interested in this video, don't be shy and let them know about this content. Either you can share it uh, via social networks or, uh, or directly with your peers, via email, via team, Zoom, whatever fits you. But just uh, don't forget to spread the word if you think that this piece of content is useful. This being said, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you back here very, very soon.